have six items here from the grocery store. Three of them are higher priced than the other three. All you have to do is pick the three most expensive ones. First aired on April 9th, 1973, High Low presents a player with six grocery items. The goal? Guess which three items cost the most. If the lowest cost of the selected items is greater than the highest cost of the unselected items, the player wins. The first iteration of High Low had slightly different rules. The contestant was given the price right away. They then had to select whether the item was higher or lower. The game quickly changed and those prices have definitely risen since the 70s. The odds of winning the game when going in blindly are 1 out of 20, or 5%. Luckily, most people have walked into a supermarket before, so your odds should be slightly better. As of this recording, the game has aired 936 times. 675 of those plays are missing, but the remaining record stands at 110 wins and 151 losses. That's a win rate of 42%. High Low was featured on Mad TV back in 2002, and in 2019, the game appeared on The Late Late Show with James Gordon. Alright, now that we learned about the game, let's build it. The first thing we should do is create a container for our game pieces. We should probably create that data next. In the clip, we saw a single air freshener, a can of coconut milk, dog treats, hot sauce, a vanilla ice cream tub that's filled with tissues? This ice cream is actually empty and full of tissues. Got like uh, three of these in my trash at home. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And lastly, a four pack of Red Bull energy drinks. Let's add another component to our container. This is where we'll map over our data and display the image, name, and price. Don't worry, we'll take care of hiding those numbers later. Let's adjust these so they're on the horizontal axis. Wait a second, that's more like it. Now that we have our game pieces, we should make some logic to interact with them. UState allows us to initialize the selected pieces to an empty array and our message to an empty string. Next, we'll create a function to select our pieces. Just like in the show, our users are not allowed to select more than three items and they can select the same item more than once. To confirm this is working as intended, I'll create a use effect hook to console log any new selected items. Not every contestant on the show sticks with their first pick. I'll create a function that allows users to deselect an item just in case they start second guessing themselves. Now at the heart of the game, we need to compare the lowest price of the selected items with the highest price of the remaining. First, we'll add a message if the user doesn't have three items. Then, using math.min and max, we can find the numbers we need. The lowest can be found by mapping over the selected items. To find the remaining, I'm using the filter method to select the items from the item pool. All that's left is to set our message. Finally, let's add a reset function that clears out the game state. Once again, let's use our favorite map method to display the selected game pieces. Clicking on an image should move them to the upper container. That's looking pretty good, but something seems wrong on the lower section. Using a basic if statement, we can simply return null if the piece is included in the selected items. That's better. Now let's give our users a way to compare the prices. Let's create a button and pass in our function in the onClick parameter. we should probably make a better button. I'll use a ternary operator here to conditionally render the submit and reset buttons. I want to display the reset only if the message has our win or loss message. I'm specifying these two because we have a third message that could be displayed if the user attempts to submit less than three items. Once again, let's use a ternary to conditionally display our prices. Let's test it out. We can see that we're able to select our items and our compare prices function is properly calculating wins and losses. But doesn't it feel like we're missing something here? Let's add this NPM package to give our winners a little something extra. We'll set our width and height to the user's current screen size. And once we do that, our game should finally be complete. 
Let's give it one last test and see how it looks. This is typically where I'd recommend my other videos, but I don't have any yet. If you enjoyed this, please click the like and subscribe buttons, and let me know down in the comments what game I should cover next. Also, let me know if you want me to show more code, or have a deeper dive into the game history. See you next time!